Okay, so uh, let me tell you about this piece of software I've written called DICOM Automaton. We use it for semi-automated contour recognition. So a little bit of background, uh, why I decided to do this. It turns out accounting for regional dose by independence in some organs can improve uh, radiotherapy outcomes. So our goal, therefore, is to search hands-free through lots of data for this dependence. The, the problem is that the problem you probably encountered is that machines can't can't easily process uh, non-uniform data. So our solution is to write a piece of software to directly attack this problem. So let me take you through this an ideal world situation here. Now uh, the data is sitting in this DICOM file, very nicely differentiated on the left. Uh, it's it's very differentiated. It's easy to tell which contour is which. The uh, the, the 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 data is is differentiated nicely, both contours and and label names, and the program on the right can easily tell w which is which. Uh, in the real world, uh, your program on the right uh, has a lot of trouble uh, dealing with discrepancies in the data, naming conventions, spelling mistakes, um, uh, the contour is looking like Swiss cheese, just. Lots of junk uh, in the in the labels. Of course, in the the real real world, your program is really just not capable of dealing with with uh, the mess of data. So, if this program is looking for the left broaded, it's going to encounter a lot of uh, difficulty determining which which country that refers to. So, Dicom Automaton is a, a shim that fits between the data as it exists in a DICOM file and as it exists if for the program, your, your program you need to run through this data. It overcomes uh, contour labeling issues, idiosyncrasies, and uh, lets your program shoot through data. So how does it work? Well, there are two main parts of a DICOM contour. The first part we'll talk about is geometrical. So, what we have is undifferentiated Swiss cheese, and what we want is uh, some nicely recognizable labels. Uh, there's there are lots of rule, uh, lots of solutions for this. Uh, we'll talk about probability spheres because it's very easy to think about. So in this case, we take a contour data in R three, and uh, we map it into a, a Hilbert space into this uh, R three into this probability or Hilbert space rather into this probability density function, square root of probability density function. Uh, we can do the same thing with the left left prodded, and then uh, when we're given an un unknown contour, we do the the same procedure, and then look at the overlap with the known structures. In this case, the left and the right prodded. So in this case, we probably be sure that it's not either. Uh, onto the lexicographical. So again, we've got uh, spelling mistakes and shortcuts, nicknames. Uh, what we want is uh, nicely differentiated labels. Um, so, this is a solved problem. Spell checkers do this. Uh, Google probably corrects, automatically corrects spelling mistakes in searches. Uh, so, it's a well studied problem. So, we'll talk about Levenstein Damrau distance. So, how does this work? So, let's say we're given two, two strings one is partoid and one is parotid. Uh, we measure the distance in the number of edits between the strings. So in this case, it's very small. If we compare partoid and body, there are six edits, um, and optic chiasm, and partoid, um, many more. So this maps intuitively to, to what we think. Uh, the partoid probably refers to the parotid. Uh, so this this isn't a, a bulletproof scheme. Uh, if we look at uh, compare right prodded with L and, and R prodded, um, this procedure actually gets it wrong. So so there are there are issues with every scheme that we we consider, but uh, none of them are perfect, but uh, our solution is to combine them all to kind of get the best of, of, of all worlds. So, so how does this perform? Uh, we'll, we're, we can use cross validation because we can't do it. We can't look at the performance directly. So let's say we've got a collection of n things on the left, uh, polka dots in this case. 
we in induce information loss, uh, take a chunk of the moat, uh, and then we we try to reconstruct using the pieces we've still got, the missing pieces. So you can imagine, uh, like like learning a foreign language, you don't need to know the entirety of the language in order to understand the majority of it. You just need a, a small kernel of it. So, in this case, uh, if we retain 75%, uh, we, we might retain, uh, achieve 0 0.98, um, inducing more loss, our recovery might be a little bit less. So with that, these plots, uh, the retention is on the x-axis. And uh, recovery is on the vertical axis, or on the right, uh, false positives. So the, the black bound is a, a lower bound. I mean, we can't do any worse than that, just uh, using an exact match. But the upper bound is actually, uh, there's just too much information loss. We can't actually get, we can't get better than that. So the, the yellow band is approximately the domain we, we would be expecting uh, to, to operate in. So the, the red line here is the basic lettersign Damarau uh, approach. It works quite well. If if we just if we look at a, com a little bit of a combined approach, uh, we can improve upon that a bit. Uh, it's, I didn't talk about it, but it's actually possible to achieve perfect recognition or maximal rec recognition using domain-specific techniques, but uh, they're a little less flexible. So the geometrical results are very similar. Uh, I'll just say that the storage and memory costs are quite a bit higher and they, they, they do have reduced false positives but the recognition rate is a little bit lower in certain circumstances. So for, rather, in most circumstances, the lexicographical are, are better. So to, just to recap, uh, DICOM automaton fits as a shim between data as it exists in the real world and and data as the, the program that you need it to, the, the program needs it Uh, so, in the future, we're going to look for this, we're actually look for the regional organ dose volume dependence, and uh, try to release this as open source software. Thank you. Yeah, very interesting. It seems like uh, you're right to take it down a step where you include both the contour information and the name information to help resolve both. Yes, sir. Create something inside the, the outside would have to be at least one, or the inside that you couldn't be one. Definitely. Uh, no patients or however many patients have, have uh, more than two prodids. So there are some hybrid techniques that we can we can do. Actually, we've, we've looked at them uh, and recognition of them does improve. Yes, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Has your uh, program also used uh, probability, uh, how like it is? That yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Just like a spell checker, uh, we can go in and uh, see see manually or in real time uh, the predictions and kind of influence the future predictions. Why just make it possible? You might not make the geometrical thing sound easy, but how do you know it's going in the head and the pelvis pieces? Uh, so uh, generally, uh, head and head and neck and pelvis patients are segregated uh, naturally. So uh, in, in this case, we have a separate set of data for both, a separate lexicon for both, rather. <laughs>